But let's now take a closer look at the front panel. And bear in mind that everything I show you now will be covered in much greater detail later on in the video. Well, starting over here, we find a built-in disk drive. Using the drive, we can store songs, sounds, as well as a whole range of other things directly to one of these, a standard 3.5-inch flippy disk. Very inexpensive and efficient storage medium. Underneath the drive, we have the master volume control, as well as C1 and C2 user-definable control sliders. And underneath that, we have the ubiquitous pitch bend and modulation controller. Now, on the front panel here, you can see that the controls are divided up with thin white lines. Each section does a different job. Over here, we have the sound palette. This allows us to make real-time changes to any of the sounds we're playing without making any permanent change to the sound. It's simply a performance tool. Over here, the key effects will define how the keyboard controls the sounds. Over here, we can select the various modes of operation of the XP80. And this huge LCD display gives us all the information we need when we're editing and performing. And underneath the display, you can see a range of function buttons. Well, these are actually soft keys, which means their particular function differs depending on the particular page that we have to be viewing. Underneath, we have buttons for tone, patch, and performance selection. Over here, we have the sequencer controls. And finally, a numerical keypad, which we can use for data entry, or alternatively, the value dial, which allows us to make changes to parameter values. And of course, last but not least, we have the 76-note keyboard, 